Hey friends, I'm Otis Gibbs, and this is my buddy Tim Easton. He's going to tell you about the time he got to tour with John Hyatt. I asked John Hyatt specifically about the trip down here, and he hitchhiking down to, to you know, let me let's talk about this. Did you really come down here hitchhiking and live in the in the park for three days? And I asked him flat out, and he's like, "Yep, I hitchhiked down with a guy named Bob Frank, and Bob Frank." was a folk guy who passed away a couple years ago and he had an album that I bought in the $2 bin. So I knew Bob Frank and he had a song about um, Jesus and Judas smoking hash together the night before Judas rats him out. Like it was just this bizarre folk song about, you know, those guys partying and Judas saying, Hey man, I, I turned you into the fuzz. And you know, it's so it, I knew Bob Frank. And it turns out that Bob Frank was in that car that John hitched to town in. And he he just told me about the neighborhood that he grew up in a little bit. That's where I lived for yeah. 20 years. So I knew that. And I, I, I'm, um, but we didn't stick on Indianapolis so much as, um, as we started talking about those first days and him camping out in the park. And I, I mean, to me, that seems like uh, a great, and it's an interesting story because of course, when you're young, you don't care where you're, you know, where you're going to spend the night. Yeah, you're going to camp in the park until you get on someone's couch. And hopefully then you get to someone's, then you get a bedroom. <laughs> and then you move on from there. So I was fascinated in that more. Um, my connection to Indianapolis was with you, you know, and then my sister who moved there. Um, so, you know, I was only three hours away in uh, Columbus, Ohio. That's definitely a, a New West connection. So New West Records was, um, I was like the young gun at the time, un unknown. And they, they had this thing where they were signing guys that were established, like the new era, this music business idea of like, you got John Hyatt, Dwight Yoakam, Steve Earle, um, and, and guys that had already had a career and now they were just gonna like find out what, was, you know, what we could do with their fan base. So they got me on the road with him, and man, again, a massive mentorship. I mean, not just in music and consummate showmanship and performance and, and being on time and doing your job and doing it well, but also recovery in his case, John Hyatt's case. Because, you know, I was drinking quite a bit at that time. And then I end up on the road with him, like in Europe, on a du double-decker bus, you know, German bus driver, double decker bus. I'm living on the bus. I'm the I'm the warm up act. I'm the support act. I got all effing day to do whatever I want in every town in Europe. It's amazing, you know. Those guys. I'm the support act. So I sleep on the bus. I wake up. When I wake up, there's a there's a there's a catering spread that you know is European, amazing, you know, whatever, good to go. My sound check's really short and sweet. We all know what's happening there. Um, you know, uh, my set's 30 minutes. I'm eating before, I'm eating after. There's, a mate, there's like, I'm just living like the easiest, most coziest life ever. And I've got all day to go to the museums if I want. And believe it or not, I did go because I'm into history and stuff like that. So I did, I did those things. And I also walked down the streets that I used to play as a street musician, you know, and just like now that I'm playing, now I'm in the, now I'm in the fancy theater you know, with John Hyatt. And I, I met some of my old busking buddies on those tours, especially outside the Carré Theater in Amsterdam. It's just like just glorious theater gigs, right? But I'm also partying quite a bit, right? So I'm, I'm not messing up my job, but I'm noticing that these guys, you know, whether it be Sonny Landreth, um, the Goners, you know, those guys are, those guys aren't partying like I'm partying, you know? They, and, uh, and it had an effect on me, you know, and and I started to talking to some of them about it, not necessarily John Hyatt. John Hyatt's main thing with me basically is like, I would like do a Dylan song at a sound check, and he'd be like, "Man, can you believe he was 22 when he wrote that song?" I'm like, "I know it's crazy, you know." And 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 or I'd do a song, and he'd be like, "Are you just goofing? Are you going to do that song in your show? Like, you know, you should sound check with the things, you know. Let's, you know, basically." Mute, you know, pro tips from the pro. And then one time in Florida, I asked him, we, we toured the States too. One time in Florida, I was like, you ever, you know, think about producing? I was trying to get him to produce an album, my, my next album. He's like, no, that's not my thing, man. 
And, uh, and then another time in Texas, like I brought a band in for a South by Southwest thing. And he's like, you don't need a band. I know. And I, <laughs> I didn't tell the band he said that, you know. <laughs> but I was just like, what do, you, what do you mean? It's fun to have a band. You, you got a band sometimes. He's like, yeah, you don't, you don't need a band. You know? And I, I, he must have, he was just trying to guide me into, you know. And, and, and then when it, when it comes to recovery and stuff like that, you know, I think we don't talk about much about like except for like how it was what happened and and what it's like now and in, in the case of of john like you know i learned from him the the um the life of the the traveling man that wasn't getting fucked up all the time you know that that thing he i saw it in action with him so that's the biggest like most important thing that he presented to me and you know i'm now i'm i'm friends with his daughter and you know, I, I just consider I consider him like mentor, friend kind of guy who just really like, you know, he altered my life. He changed my life in ways I I had no idea. Yeah, we we had our you know joking moments, and I got to say one big moment was when Levon Helm came to see the show at the Egg in uh, Albany, New York, and I just like you know what, what's what's up with the old guy smoking the joint backstage? You know, like who's this guy? And I didn't even put it together you know until john is like we were talking about smoking and cancer and it's like serious stuff because he would like go buy cigars at the cigar store and one time i saw him around the streets of providence you know and he had some cigars and stuff and he's like i don't know why i'm do still doing this you know after seeing levon and i'm like that was levon you know like i admit it's it's very it's very kind of just subtle subtle uh do as I say, not as I do kind of behavior. But then all of a sudden, all of a sudden, you know, also do as I do. You know, like, do you want to, do you want to get ripped with these guys at this, you know, club in the middle of nowhere um, or in Detroit or something and miss your gig? Is that the way you want to live this life? And I learned, I learned some of that from him, you know, him, him just basically being really honest with me about the way it could play out, you know, but it, it wasn't like doling out advice. He was just, he knew that I was on a certain, just, you know, destructive path. Yeah, there we are backstage at the Egg in Albany, New York, and it's a really beautiful venue, and there's people about, and Levon Helm is back there. He, the last thing he wants is attention from some young buck songwriter that has a harmonica harness. It probably gives him, he probably has like a little uh, post-traumatic stress, from, you know, uh, from guys wearing harmonica harnesses and stuff. And, uh, and he's just like, he's like, you know, he he was there. I remember him now. Again, it's not like superstition. Like I don't want to bother my heroes, but I kind of just like let it go. And you know, I thought, well, this is my life. You know, this these people in there. He he loved John Hyatt. You know, he was a big Hyatt fan. And I was there to to again not um, harass the backstage buddies of John Hyatt. You know, I was just kind of lucky to be there put my head down and go to work. And um, I'm from upstate New York too. It's a, you know, a family and stuff there too, myself. So the, uh, yeah, the, the life of, of the, when you're traveling with a great artist like John Hyatt, it's basically buckle down and get to work and do your job and don't have to get lectured by his tour manager for being late for sound check. And also going five minutes over, real bad move on the Hyatt tour. One gig in Providence, got a friend's like, man, check out my new electric guitar. It's got the, it's with the amp built into it. What's that guitar? He brings it. I plug it in. I play it for the show. Word comes down from the boss. No electric guitars. You're not playing. You're not going to be louder. Just that back off. Get back to what Tim Easton does. Again, just trying to keep me focused. If you enjoyed this video and you'd like to see more like it, subscribe to my channel, hit the like button, and tell me down below what your favorite John Hyatt song is, and I'll see you somewhere down the road. Much love to you.